mindset YouTube nonsense you hear like all the time. It's all yeah. over the place. Well, it's the done for you thing. And, and it's literally like four guys in skinny jeans out of Pakistan who are trying to just run right. your business and give you 50% of the profits, which you have no control over. And that sounds really sexy because they throw the word passive in there. Right. But you have no control over it. You have no growth. And I have multiple horrible stories of people losing fifty, hundred thousand dollars and more in those you know, the, not all scams, but in those models because they have no control over the business mm -hmm. and they get caught up a little in what I call that hopium mindset mentality, that lottery mindset mentality that I don't have to do anything. I can do it while I'm in my other job or business. And it just sounds really great if they do all the work and I just take the profits. When in actuality, there's a lot of lost controls. There's a lot of lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding that puts them in a position where they are subjective to the will of the market, the will of those people and anything else they cannot control. I am on the opposite side of that fence. You control the business, you own hundred percent of it. You're going to grow the opportunity and the opportunity to take that uh, active investment and make it into more of a auto you know, automated income profit investment or nearly passive investment as you grow that business model out. All right, guys. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. So today, you know, we always talk about, you know, our goal is to help you build, teach you principles that help you become and remain financially free. And so one of the things, guys, if you got to, you know, the, we teach the money for life process. So we're, the first principle is get money. <laughs> OK, so you got to have income. So I have Mr. Uh, Neil Twa today. Neil is let me tell you about and here's the title of this show so we can start you off with a hook so um he builds underground amazon fba millionaires right and so he reveals you, know, you gotta do the work all right but he reveals how to build hyper profitable amazon business to exit the business in 36 months without any experience in e-commerce okay and uh and so that's awesome so i said oh i saw that i saw him and i know some people that work with him i says we've got to have you on my show i don't know if i was on his show right and so uh neil let me and so neil's business is he voltage right so digital launches he operates and acquires e-commerce brands with a focus on amazon fba among other things neil welcome to the practical well show and Please tell him I didn't tell him because I know I messed it up. <laughs> yeah, no, you got it. <laughs> yep, Neil Twa. Thanks, Curtis. Appreciate it, man. And so let's talk about. Uh, t so tell them, fill in a little bit, and then let's get into you know showing them you know what this world is. Yeah, and why they should be in it. It's a fascinating world, man. I, I've been in it since the internet came online in terms of e-com and digital business of some kind and involvement with digital and mobile phones and high tech and the oil and gas industry and knowledge management and AI systems and all kinds of stuff has been pretty much my entire career. Uh, my own management consulting journey started in uh, 2007 after I left my position at, at IBM mm -hmm. uh, and spent the better part of the last 15 years working at uh, e-commerce levels and, and high tech and oil and gas and uh, public services, private services, and of course, in the digital and marketing world, uh, including Amazon. So I've done uh, a lot uh, in the you know, growing and developing and scaling of new businesses. I particularly found that, um, you know, the real uh, passion I have was building brands and, and growing them and watching people buy those products and getting excited about watching those brands grow and organically grow because we were providing a great product to someone who really appreciated it and enjoyed the product. So I really got wrapped up in that whole thing and just got spent a lot of time developing brands. And, uh, and that started predominantly on Amazon over 10 years ago, uh, mm -hmm. using that as a public facing marketplace to reach people with those products. Uh, and it's changed a lot in 10 years, as you can imagine. Uh, there's been a lot of development, a lot of growth, a lot of money being put into these systems of growth. And of course, a lot of people who are now using and buying products online more there. But in fact, you probably think this is interesting. I did. But there are now more mobile purchases on Amazon than desktop and more mobile purchases overall in America as of last quarter, December, uh, the quarter of 2022, uh, fourth quarter, uh, has now set a benchmark. So we have shifted predominantly from just desktop buying to mobile buying, which means more than 60% of people buy something every week on their mobile phone. 
So that's a major growth and adoption curve to consider, you know, why an e-commerce business, why a digital online business is because that's where everything is moving. You know, like it or not, it is headed to digital commerce and it is going to flip uh, in the future, We're not too far off. It's going to move from you know predominantly retail and other store and big box chains to online digital commerce. There's a flip coming. Um, That's so funny because that, as I think about that, I'm prime and if I, I'll just look on, I see something I like. Usually it's a book or an audio book, or, but it's something and it's like, okay, buy now. It's a convenience of it. It's on your yeah. phone. It's not hard. You get your credit card on Amazon. It's a little dangerous if you're not paying attention because bleep, 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 and things that show up really fast. But customer you know, uh, acquisition and the strategy we go after has to do with really understanding Amazon's ecosystem and, and you know why that system and why not, why private label versus wholesale or other types of models. Maybe we can break that down a little bit and give people some of the you know five reasons why you know you need to really consider Amazon as a business model first in a multi or omni channel strategy, which means you're going to go. Let's talk Amazon. about that because I've heard like is because it's you, you know I've heard, both uh, you know one of the things I heard is one is the worst word in business, but you do ha can have a preference, you know. Sure. But I like the whole multi channel then. But yes. so can you break that down a little bit? So the premise is. Yeah. All right, you want to be in business, okay? Whether it's a side business or it's a business you ain't got to work all the time. You don't want a, another a second job, <laughs> you know, that mm. stresses you out. But you need to be able to expand your ability to earn money. All right, that's so right. That's the premise. Yes. Of this conversation, just so y'all yes. y'all y'all get it. And so now, out of the asset class business, now we're going to segment that into e-commerce. And then now let's right. break down the 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 that uh, yeah. ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, what we're talking about is uh, in my world, physical private label branded products that we own and have the intellectual property or IP control of. That means we have the brand, the trademark registrations, and if necessary, like patent pending uh, on those products. If we have a really unique product in the marketplace that we developed and, and moved into the market. That physical product and private label creates intrinsic value in the business as opposed mm -hmm. to flipping someone else's products for profit. We're actually moving our products. We're not uh, just, you know, confusing the issue around product movement with things like shop your way to wealth or wholesale or arbitrage or online arbitrage, which I would typically see as more of a side hustle or a hobby business. When yeah. we move into the brand side of business and we move into the opportunity to create intrinsic growth and conversation and things that move beyond you, right? Where we right. want to ultimately work the business, but we don't want the business to work us, right? See, that's interesting because I, what you said, the latter thing, that's what I thought it was. That's what a lot of people think it is. I'm they do on, because it's a, lot of or, yeah, yeah, it's a lot I'm, of shortcut. Yeah, it's a lot of shortcut hopium mindset YouTube nonsense you hear like all the time. It's all yeah. over the place. Well, it's the done for you thing. And and it's literally like four guys in skinny jeans out of Pakistan who are trying to just run right. your business and give you 50% of the profits, which you have no control over. And that sounds really sexy because they throw the word passive in there. Right. But you have no control over it. You have no growth. And I have multiple horrible stories of people losing fifty, hundred thousand dollars and more in those, you know, the, not all scams, but in those models because they have no control over the business. Mm -hmm. And they get caught up a little in what I call that hopium mindset mentality, that lottery mindset mentality that I don't have to do anything. I can do it while I'm in my other job or business. And it just sounds really great if they do all the work. Work and I just take the profits. When in actuality, there's a lot of lost controls. There's a lot of lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding that puts them in a position where they are subjective to the will of the market, the will of those people and anything else they cannot control. I am on the opposite side of that fence. You control the business. You own 100 percent of it. You're going to grow the opportunity and the opportunity to take that uh, active investment and make it into more of a auto, you know, automated income profit investment or nearly passive investment as you grow that business model out while still being able to create, you know, a lifestyle business model like mm -hmm. I have where you can mm -hmm. homeschool and live in 40 acres in the country and do what you want to do, uh, which is the model that I developed and the model my partner follows and the people we train follow that model as well. And I've had the opportunity to grow a business. I've had the opportunity to put $100 million into Voltage to go out mm -hmm. and acquire companies. Uh, in the aggregation space where we would acquire multiple entities and brands. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to do that because that would basically have inverted my lifestyle as a business back to a business that was going to try to fight back to my lifestyle. And a lot of people recognize where they are now in life, work or business. They're trying to get a lifestyle, right? They're trying to make more money to grab that lifestyle. They're trying to get that next job. They're working the extra hours. They're trying to elevate themselves through education means or otherwise to get to a lifestyle that they actually want. And honestly, that's just continuing to chase the lifestyle that they could have if they were just willing to make the change. 
And that change is tough. And I've done it in the past. So I'm speaking from mm-hmm. firsthand experience in a non judgmental mm-hmm. form. And I forced a change in my life years ago to get rid of the cars, to deal and, and, and accept the risk and to change my life to a position where I, you know, as the book, uh, I think it's the E myth says, you do uh, what no one else wants to do for three to five years so you can live like no one else lives for the, ne- the rest of your life. And yeah. that's the model that I took to heart. And so I inverted my life and it's given me that opportunity. I want to show people that they have to do that. Now, it's not a side hustle or a hobby. It cre- requires the team effort, as we refer to it, time, energy, attention and money. Right. T for time, N for energy, A for attention. Got to pay attention. Right. right. And M, of course, for money. Money in, Listen, money guys, out. That's a rider downer. OK. If you're listening, what does it take to a, scale a, a business to mm-hmm. in 36 months to eight figures? If mm-hmm. you're like Daniel, it's going to take upwards of a million dollars over those 36 months to, a, to reach an eight figure business model. But that's a mm-hmm. pretty darn good ROI. Yeah. Especially when the dude's pulling down more than 40% in net profits in his business. Right. It's extremely profitable. But we go for products and brands that create that upside and organic potential. Is he a bit of a unicorn? Not necessarily. The guy was a he had a golf course management degree and a theology sub degree. He had never sold an e-commerce product his entire life. Hmm. We trained him how to do that. So Voltage, in its essence, is an incubator of products and brands that start. We start on Amazon, right? And then we move products into retail and direct to consumer, or what's known as DTC. Mm-hmm. We do that because once I prove a brand past seven figures on Amazon, I know who's buying. I know their demographics. I know why they're buying, what their price ceiling is. I know what else they're buying on Amazon. And I can take all those assets and move them into a direct channel marketplace or out to retail with a very confident understanding of who they are. Now, for the people who would argue that I can start direct a channel, a Shopify website or WooCommerce or e-commerce or whatever, they can do a similar thing, only they find very quickly that they have a hard... um, bridge if you will to cross to get from dtc to amazon it's not the same okay if i go from amazon to to direct to consumer as going direct to consumer to amazon why product price point marketing and differentiations on this side do not always match what amazon is driving inside of its ecosystem Hmm. so you have to look at them as very separate channels which is why you know i have a country sayings i'll probably throw a few of them out here so forgive me but you can't ride two horses with one ass. <laughs> so you got to choose which horse to ride. I was trying to think one. of that uh, the other day for something. And I was like, I, what was that thing? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You literally can't. It's physically impossible. It's emotionally, spiritually, uh, and monetarily impossible. Right. So we have companies that are doing 5, 10, 30 million or more in the direct-to-consumer space who come to us and say, hey, help us get this Amazon channel done right. We've been limping along. We gave it a shot. We're maybe doing 10 or 20 or 50,000 a month on Amazon, which for them is hardly anything given the scope of their company. And they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, we can't grow it. We don't know what the heck they're doing. So they pull us in to help. And as management consultants, we strategize, we give opportunities, resources, we direct, and we have you know profit-based goals. I will usually put skin in the game. I usually for my individuals um, that want to get involved or small businesses that want to get involved. And I'll put 10K on the line as part of my fees mm-hmm. um, to say, look, if you're the right person and we're the right fit, I'm holding 10K back in cash and I'm betting on you to show up do the work, follow my process, work with my team and coaches and my resources in my infrastructure. And I'm going to expect that in 12 months from revenue, you're going to hit 100K in net profits, minimum, base case. From there, what is working can go as fast as you're willing to deploy capital at that point, because now we know it's working, you deploy more capital. So how did you know Daniel get to that point? Once Daniel put his own money in the game, put his own risk in the game and got started, he saw exactly what was working. There was no guessing. It was all by the numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Numbers mm-hmm. and business and tracking are very important. No emotions, all by the numbers. Mm-hmm. And so he knew that, look, I, these are the products I'm selling. These are what's working now. I want to go get more of those and I want to get more like them. So he knew exactly that he needed more capital to put into what was working. At that point, it was capitalization. So he went out and he got the capital necessary, which allowed him to grow faster than others. Because is mm-hmm. he wholly unique unicorn? Did he have all this experience in econ before? No, he didn't. He was trained. He was trained like a pilot. We're his flight instructors. He did his hundred hours. And now he's actually one of our coaches because he does very well in a couple of specific areas of expertise. Mm-hmm. And now he changed it trains individuals in our pipeline in those subject matter area expertise areas that he's very good at. He's obviously good at a whole lot of things, but he likes a couple of things really well and does them really well. And so in our critical path of success, he's one of the coaches that trains on that specific area. Each of my coaches uh, are builders, growers, and doers in these business and are currently w- working daily, weekly, monthly in operations. So they're in real-time mode. 
Um, but the growth in the e-commerce opportunity is huge. It's flipping. They estimate uh, Bank of America and, and Department of Commerce um, estimated recently and Forrester Research combined uh, estimated around 21, 22 trillion in sales are coming online uh, in the next decade. So that money is moving online. So they're, you're not behind the eight ball, but you're going to miss it in the next few years because there's going to be so much more opportunity coming online that you could take advantage of if you're willing to risk a little bit to get it in the market. And this is where we do business building to create that 36 months of intrinsic value. And the win-win, triple win here, just so we're clear, mm -hmm. is that if I teach you how to become the pilot and you become a great pilot and get certified and fly, and then you go to fly pilot for me, you go to you know do for voltage what you could do for yourself for a while, and then I might buy your plane from you later on. Right. In this instance, mm -hmm. in 36 months, Voltage has what's called a first right to refusal opportunity to look at purchasing that business off market from our clients. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a triple win. We help you get started. We help you grow and scale. And then after 36 months, if the business looks like we expect it to, then we will potentially make you an off market offer, which means no brokers, no fees and a handshake opportunity to sell that company to Voltage and then the opportunity to stay in it or get removed and go hit the golf course if that's what you choose to do. Right. And then we're going to grow it up to the next level and I'm taking it to my next level of investors, right? Who won't deploy less than 25 million in capital for the business. So we're going to raise that thing up until they're willing to buy it, which will typically take another 24, 36 months or less, depending upon how fast moving that brand is growing. And then we sell it again. Wow. So that is awesome. the model. Yeah. And so guys, you could, you could have a nice exit if you, Absolutely. as you care to do, but see, but what's happened is, See, because what so I want to follow y'all because y'all know we talk about the three rules of investing here, right? So invest in what you know yep. or invest in knowing, right? Is what right. you would be doing. Invest in what you and he said this word like three different times. Invest in what you can control. Control mm -hmm. is key. Invest in or or what you can influence the outcome of That's and right. don't chase returns, right? So you're working with people that know what they're doing, that if you're serious, they're serious, you can work together, build an asset. That's right. That cash flowing and could be sold to get a good cash out. But see, the other Absolutely. thing you have is the skills to do it you again. Can. Well, that's what we teach how to go yeah. in and almost create a franchise like model mm -hmm. of brand after brand after brand after brand. Because once you get inside and you understand the first question, like, what the heck do I even sell? And once I teach you and train you and condition you how to do that, you will see so many products you'll have more than you can do in a lifetime. So now it becomes a priority and a, a numerical priority and accounting priority to determine which ones am I going to do next. And some of them won't fall into brand one. So the opportunity to hold them aside for a second is to get brand one up and running and take profits and then open brand two. And they can open brand three and four. I mean, this can keep going for a long time. I've been doing it for over a decade. I'm mm -hmm. teaching my students how to do the same thing. I've got multiple individuals building secondary brands uh, out of the first brand so that when they sell the first brand, they have the second brand to deploy capital and knowledge into 10 times faster. Hmm. That's all right. My head is just, but I'm trying to get my thoughts together here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of information I realize, and I do talk fast, so uh, I can slow down if I'm moving too quickly. Well, no, no. I mean, they can stay to go back and listen to this, but um, what are the, the, I guess you talked about, so that's the, so I see why you start in Amazon and then it moves into other stuff. 150 million buyers who do nothing but click add to cart in 30 seconds or less. Right. That's why. <laughs> okay. Yeah, pretty and much. Are, I know where the traffic is. I right. know where the eyeballs are and I know how to put the offer in front of them. And that's one of the biggest mistakes new folks with no e-commerce experience don't know how to do. They don't know how to run traffic and pay traffic and run ads on TikTok and Google. And they don't really understand social media marketing yet. That's not their area of expertise. And if you don't know how to talk to that person and get them to come click on your website, you will lose your opportunity. You you need people to see your product. Mm -hmm. And the fastest way to take someone who has no e-commerce, and I know you cut you off for a second, but I, but I want to emphasize this point is to go where the people sell mm -hmm. and go where the people are buying. And that is Amazon. 38% of the market share in America. Okay. There are $650 million a day in sales pumping through Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a huge marketplace of opportunity. And all I'm going to do from revenue to our hundred K and net profit goal is to teach you how to make $300 a day in profit while you're sleeping. Once you learn how to do that, Okay. You can get 600, 900, 1200. You're going to know exactly how to get to those next levels and how to deploy capital. And then it's just a matter of time to deploy that. So the time I think you were hinting just a little bit at 
it does take you a minimum of 15 hours a week to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. And I ask people to do a minimum of 15. Why? Because there's a knowledge transfer that has to occur. And up front, it's a bit of knowledge. Okay. I can simplify that after all my experience down to find a product, develop a product and sell a product. But you're going to have to go through that process and walk some of it on your own. And some of you are going to walk a little bit in faith because you've never done it. But you're going to trust us to take you there just like it. You're going to be in the plane with us and make sure it's not going to crash, even though you don't know how to fly it. And when you're learning how to fly it, we're going to be there to make sure we understand how everything is going and what steps to take. Because it's easy to launch a plane. Anybody could literally get the plane off the ground. It's the landing that's the problem. Mm -hmm. I think that's so powerful. One of the things that we, we try to talk about is that most people have been trained to look for the easy button, right? But there's yeah, nothing, for it. nothing good comes from easy, right? Like it's simple, really. but you if you want to be good at anything, like I used to read when I was in high school, Neil, I, a lot of people don't, I, I was talking to these young guys one time and you heard George Gervin. Like mm -hmm. who? I was like Kevin Durant before Kevin Durant. <laughs> that was the best way to describe <laughs> it, right? That's a good way to put it, yeah. Right, right. And, uh, but I read, when I was in middle school, I read he shot like 600 shots a day, you know? A and, lot of practice. And that's a lot of practice. So, okay, success leaves clues. I ended up being one of the top scorers in Philly, but I used to shoot four or 500 shots a day because I read that that's what he did. You know, Tiger or Serena Williams, they, they hit a thousand balls a day. So, you know, you got to anybody that's good at anything, piano, whatever, they've got, they put the reps in. That's where the energy and attention part of the team comes in, right? Yeah. If you can't show yeah. up with energy and attention to doing this, then the model will uh, fail. So people are like, well, how many people fail at this? Or what, what do people fail? Or what's the major failures? Or do they fail because they work with you? Or do they fail because they work on their own? Or just how do they fail in this whole thing? And the end result is they give up. Yeah. That is, I know it sounds so stupid, simple, but in the end, yeah, you give up in anything and you will fail. But in e-commerce, with the amount of product opportunities there are, if you consider one product that doesn't sell at the level you expect it to, and now you can't go buy that new shiny Mercedes Benz, then you are failing the system. The system isn't failing you. Mm -hmm. The system is to go out and test, like you said, 600 balls. So I learned how to hit a, you know, a, a shot every time from every place on the court. I know I'm best at making those shots repeatedly. Right. And e-commerce is the same way. All of these different products have an opportunity. We call it don't marry your products, skills, you know, steal someone else's girlfriend instead. And with a billion SKUs in Amazon, there's both an opportunity and a danger. Let me explain what that means. We, in our experience, have gone out and having done so many uh, hundreds of millions in sales over that 10 years can tell you that there's only about 6% of that entire product database that's actually going to hit the kind of metrics, growth, and scalability that we're targeting for in the kinds mm -hmm. of business that we're shooting to build. And we're not playing small. So at the end of the day, that means about 94% uh, of the products an average Joe would pick on their own or go out in a basic research process as part of a course and not really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. We'll select one of those products that will ultimately fail them. There won't be enough profit. They're going to move a lot of uh, units. And ultimately, some of the truth of what you hear online with YouTube and other things is, yeah, Amazon's going to make a lot of the money. The fees are going to feel really high. Because of that, you're not going to make a whole lot of profit. And the average seller will last four to six months within that. And then they give up, right? because they have not truly done the due diligence process up front of which product, what market, what competition versus saturation, and actually how to really take that product one and turn it into an entire portfolio or a brand of products. And that is really truly the opportunity. Our sellers will do between five, 15 to a hundred SKUs inside of their business where an average seller will do three to five. Gotcha. So we are on a different, path yeah. of belief you're Each building of those a products business a, guys you hear him he's talking about building a yeah. business this is not some little 100%. side hustle thing like one of the things no. that i hope you're hearing my dad i heard this from the time i was uh i want to say eight neil from my dad because i grew up we had a supermarket and uh so he used to tell me i said dad i remember we were driving by these, these friends that had these little corner stores mm -hmm. and he's like and, but i would notice them open and close open and close i said well what why does the doors get open and closed? And I says because it takes two to five years to build a business. And they they just they don't have enough capital, they don't stay in it long enough to give their efforts time to compound. And I, I've heard I've first time I heard it was like man. I was about eight. And see, so now you've got somebody that will walk, you know, hold your hand and uh walk you through that, but y'all have got to stay the course and see because so most people suffer. Yeah, what, from short-term thinking is there is the number one problem. They really do. And, and short-term, they thinking. really do. 
Mm -hmm. And they have short term thoughts and the way they think about business or opportunity because of risk, because of concerns, because of scammers and because of that crap out there that we all know exists. And most all of us, even I have been a victim of all of that nonsense, mm -hmm. too. Right. Mm -hmm. And but at the end of the day, understand what I'm doing. I'm giving a person an opportunity to have a runway to learn how to become their own pilot in their business, mm -hmm. which is a win for them. We win by them getting into the successful metrics of growth. And that's a win win because of the kind of measures we have. And I'm putting 10K on the line that they're going to do that as part mm -hmm. of my fees. OK, mm -hmm. I have a consulting fee and a performance fee. I'm putting the 10K performance fee on the line. It says, hey, if you're the right person and I did a good job of vetting you, then if you go do the work, then I'm going to expect to get that back later on because mm -hmm. we're going to get to a performance. And then there's the win of selling the business, which we all win in in the end. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a triple win effect. I don't want all the employees. I don't have any employees. What I have is operators, highly trained, highly skilled operators. I don't want the warehouse and infrastructure. So I leverage Amazon's warehouse and infrastructure and it's up sales. So I don't have to have those, right? I don't have closets full of it and I don't have garages full of <laughs> right, right. Right. Um, So I can leverage a lifestyle opportunity, which ultimately in the end, as I experienced uh, uh, in my own journey, as I tried to build a business, found myself trying to scrabble my way back to a lifestyle, which was mm -hmm. terrible. Mm -hmm. And now I recognize that all that money in the world isn't going to is not going to affect my willingness to keep my lifestyle over opportunity over business opportunity. So I don't want to have a bunch of employees and I don't need to do it all myself at the end of the day. So I raise up these people within my groups. And that's going to answer the question, hopefully, to some people's minds. Why do I do this at all? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for highly trained, highly motivated operators, which is why it's application based. And I don't take everybody. I'm not looking to grow quantity. I'm looking for quality, which means I only look for five to seven people per month. And some months I don't meet those people mm -hmm. in my process because I don't feel they're qualified and I don't want them to fail on their dime on my time. Because where does that go, Chris? Right online. Uh, Chris, right. it goes right online with with you know bad reviews and negative crap. And they told you know all this stuff. And I don't want any of that in my life. Right. So I choose who I work with. Right. Um, and you know, at some point I may disappear and not do that anymore, but right now it's been fun. And if you understand network is net worth, then you understand why I get involved in those folks, why they get involved, why I share my resources and connections and they share their resources and connections. And that's where part of what I do is a mastermind as well as coaching and mentoring, uh, that gives people that runway and opportunity in a one-on-one -on -one consultancy, uh, to show them exactly how to do this. I want them to build a great asset because I want to buy it later on. I don't want to buy a crappy asset. <laughs> right, right. What do they need to want? Like uh, I was yeah. listening to something like they don't, they need to want, like I, I always, Dan Sullivan says two types of freedom, freedom from and freedom to. So I, I find people yes. don't know what, they know what they don't want, but yes. they don't know what they want. And um, uh, what's his name? Napoleon Hill would say, most people don't have a chief definite aim nor no. plan to achieve it. That's right. They just don't want what they have now at the end of the day. And we call right. that hell island in our world. Uh, and they can see heaven island over there because maybe they visited it you know, one day during vacation with their family. Mm -hmm. And they're like, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? What if we've all had those, right? You know, what if that house at the beach in Florida we stayed at last week was the house that we lived in? What right. if? Right. So we have our heaven islands in mind, whatever they are. What if it was more time with our grandchildren? over here? What if we could travel a little more freely and still keep money and make business if we didn't, if we're stuck to our location or our job or certain restrictions that we have? Everybody has that what if. What they don't understand is the stuff in the middle. They understand where they are. They understand where they'd love to be at said Florida house, maybe, or wherever their vacation place, right. wherever they'd love to be. Caribbean, who knows, right? Um, it's the stuff in the middle that they miss, right? And the stuff in the middle is what takes the time, energy, and attention and money to actually go. To go from good to great, uh, as the book has said, is a difficult struggle process at best. When you have something good, it's very hard to give up. When do we typically as humans give up something good? When we've been fired, let go, or a major medical issue upends our life, either it's mm -hmm. us personally or a spouse, family member, child, or otherwise. And then we decide it's time to change. But what if you could just take that moment of time and have that moment of clarity and just say, you know what, while it's good, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go after great. Mm -hmm. Right. What's great? Great for me. So we're clear. My stack goes like this. One, two, three, fun, people and profit. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I'm not having fun in my business, then something's gone wrong. I'm stressing out. I don't like it. It's could be the people that are involved, could be the kind of people I got involved, could be the situation I put myself in, which makes it no more fun. And is the model of business I'm doing actually fun? Do I enjoy it? Do I look forward to it? Do I talk to people about it and enjoy myself? And do we have conversations that I find enjoyable? If that's not fun, then why am I doing it? Right. If I'm doing it, it's probably just for a paycheck or for the money, which is the wrong reason to do it. And if I'm not enjoying the people 
and the people that are involved in it and they're not enjoying me, then this is where you don't profit. You don't profit personally, spiritually, financially, uh, being always the last one physically, uh, emotionally. If those things are not being met, you're getting the wrong kind of profit in your life. And then the monetary profit, which should actually be at the bottom of that stack, will never mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. If you invert that stack and look for fun people and the profit value of purpose, whatever it is, and it just can't be a monetary outcome. That's wrong. I'm not looking for people who have that in mind. I'm looking for people who understand that of those activities, profit will come from that, the financial, because the other things have now stacked up, which all lead to purpose. And if that's it, and the purpose is to build something that I can exit later on, then the opportunity becomes, like Daniel, a generational wealth moment. When, Jan when Daniel sells his business for more than $10 million, which it is completely valuable at that asset level now, that's a generational wealth move. Yeah. yeah. That's a very different move than what most people are thinking in this business model. Is the average six to seven figures? Yes. Can people move faster than that? Absolutely. But sometimes, Curtis, people don't feel like they're worth it. It comes to mindset at the end of the day. One right. of the biggest things you asked about earlier ends up with mindset. It can any mechanism of business work? Sure. That's why real estate's out there. That's why I know a guy with 52 Truro cars. That's why I know a guy with a thousand Airbnbs. That's why we all know people of some level of success in a variety of areas. And I know more e-commerce people with more success because that's my world. Right. But at the end of the day, when those things, people are dedicated to doing that and they understand ultimately the profit um, comes when you build the business with the end in mind. Okay. So then we build it, you know, build from the beginning first with the end in mind. Can it cash flow? Can it be profitable? Can we go to growth? Could we keep it for a long time before we sell it? Absolutely. There's no requirement to sell things. Mm -hmm. There's opportunity to sell things. And if we understand inflation and business and economies of scale, and do we understand the you know inflation transitory and movement of inflation that's been here and still here and hopefully the, hope to God it doesn't keep going to the levels of hyperinflation, mm -hmm. then we understand money's worth more today than it is tomorrow. Economics 101, right? If I go out 24, 36 months and sell that business and re um, recapture 24 to 36 months of profits at time of sale, what am I going to do with that? Personally, I'm not just going to go sell on a golf course. I'm right. going to put that knowledge and capital back to work. And in that next three years where I've regained three years of capital and profit, I'm going to build another business during that time frame, another brand and do it again. And if you understand the opportunity behind that, then you know why we sell these companies. Right. I'm selling them on the way up. Yeah. So people say, I was on the phone with a guy I knew before we got on. I was like, well, I want generational wealth. But nobody knows. Like, he just gave you the plan. Okay. And um, yeah. for, you know, in, oh, you know, it takes uh, three years. Three years is nothing. Right. 36 months is nothing. Years. How fast did the last 36 months go in your life? Stop and right. think about it for a second. Think That's about four years of college and you come out and don't know how to do jack. With $250,000 in debt. And <laughs> yeah. then you have to go make money. Right which I think is the real weirdness. And I got out of that a long time ago because I got caught up in that and realized there was, you know, there was other opportunities to do that. I know that it doesn't work for everybody. I know that what I'm saying is not carte blanche. I understand that because of my own experience and stuff, my visibility into some of these things isn't at the same level as it used to be. Although mm -hmm. I do remember and constantly remind myself of the screenshot of my lowest point in life right before I went bankrupt because I did go bankrupt once before and I've wrecked it all to the bottom. So I know where it takes to start over from scratch, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had a $214 and and 55 cents in one bank account, which was my primary account and the bills account, which needed about $2,000 to pay my bills that month had about $805 in it. All right. And the guy with family and three kids. Okay. So I know what it is to risk just so we're clear. I'm not operating on cloud nine separate from everybody's reality. I've walked through reality, put my back against the wall and came out fighting. Mm -hmm. E-commerce is what saved my family. E-commerce is what changed my life. E-commerce was the opportunity to create more of a lifestyle, to be with my girls every day since they've been born. Okay. And live their life and be with them and create that value that I will never regret. regret because in 20 years, who's going to be the only person that ever remembered you working late? It's your children. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's so key. I mean, you got to build a business. So you and I struggle with this sometimes is you you have to be present. Right. And yep. like, you know, at the beach, you can be at the beach, but you're thinking about something else. So hard you know? to turn it off as guys. It really yeah. is hard to, do, to turn yeah. that off. Yeah. And we take two to three or four days to do that during vacation. So we're kind of frustrated because of how fast it goes. And right about the time 
you're starting to get that, you know, turn down period. It's time to leave again. Right. <laughs> it really, and that sucks because I was that guy, right? Yeah. You know, it was yeah. one week vacation. You're all excited to go. There's a lot of build up. You get there. And I mean, as a business traveler, once upon a time, a road warrior who spent more than 100 days a year on the road, at one point in my worst time, I was over 200 days in a year. I can tell you that as I flew those buses in the air, uh, which started to look like the Indian buses with 59 people, three goats and five chickens hanging off the side of it. And I felt right. like I was getting on that thing every time. I could always tell the very angry, frustrated, stressed out men and, and women who were on their vacations because they were the worst people in the airport. Mm. Think about that for a second. The people going on their vacation were the worst people in the worst airport. airport. Wow. Yeah. Neil, and I, I thought, man, that day. is yeah, not going to be me. That can't be yeah. me. I That's what we want, want here for how you guys. How do I make that stop? Yeah. So how, why don't I bring these people? Because I want you to see, because there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, right? So and so investing is about becoming something. That's right. Not about buying something. So 100%. it's not my well, job well. to tell you what to become, right? And so, you know, hopefully the goal of our show is to here's things that are out there. Like to me, I think the fastest path to cash is business. <laughs> okay. And uh, for the, you know, for the right person, it's a lot of moving parts, but you know, I don't know where you can have a million, five, ten million dollar exit in less than five years. The right coach it, and it, mentor in any practicality will lead you to the end result. If you want short-term rentals, then find the best guy with 500 short-term rentals and get him, if he doesn't have a pro, get him to mentor you. Okay. I mean, literally you cannot become a journey tra a trademan apprentice and go be an electrician or a plumber without doing that. You have to go through a journeyman apprentice. You can't just yeah. walk out to somebody's house yeah. and start plumbing. Right. Or you can't just walk out there and start screwing around with their electrical. Yet no one thinks about that in business the same way. What they right. think about is business course management from the local college. Right. And by people taught by people who have never been in business. But I've never uh, been in business. Right. I, I literally convinced my mentor to give me some time because he's worth half a billion dollars. And mm -hmm. I had to, you know, get him to spend some time with me to learn some things from him. Right. And that was better education well spent than my three years in college. That was wasted information and time. And I life. know. I realized I could learn more than my dad for three years, you know, four right. years. <laughs> Listen and, and learn and apply. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, the true opportunity for business is to be mentored and coached by someone who's actually in the daily, weekly, monthly operations of a business who can teach you how to get through the experience and grow so that you can become a full operator. I mean, you didn't just go out and drive a car either. You had to be trained on driving the car. Then you had to get a license and go through a pass to get to the car. It's the same way in businesses. People just need to start thinking about it that way. But mm -hmm. you get all this side hustle, hopium, $1,000 a day mindsets in 20 minutes kind of nonsense online. And people have all these unrealistic expectations. I call it the lottery mindset mentality. The scratch and sniff, you know, way you to a million dollars, which is literally less than one half of 1% of our population will ever have an opportunity to win that. Chances of getting struck by lightning are actually higher. Um, you know, dying in your car today is probably 100 times higher than any of those. So the statistical mm -hmm. relevance of things that are opportunities like that versus the bad things that can happen to you and, and not trying to be morbid, but let's look at this from a realistic pers you know, perspective for a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you're putting your life in more jeopardy driving to your job every day than starting a business. Right. Statistically. So if you really just stop and think about where you're putting your life energy and time and where you're putting your real risk, it starts to make more sense when you think about betting on yourself, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you just got to trust yourself. So a lot, a lot of people say, oh, you know, all this mindset stuff. But the, everybody you hear that, that's successful, guys, that's what we they start with. Because, yeah, you know, I had change to break my mindset. Point. I had yeah, to break to, it. And it's broken because we're, I was just to a viral golden take this morning. I was like, you know, we're programmed for poverty, right? So you have to reprogram yourself you to look for uh, success. Neil, what didn't, I know there's some, there's some, some, some steps and we, we got to get you back. We're going to, cause I want to go into some tactical stuff. So I think we should, should, right should do this again, but anything I didn't ask you that you want to, um, to bring up and then let's talk about how to help these people if who qualify yeah. that, that couldn't, you know, maybe go further with you down this path. Well, let's look at the, you know, we talked about time, energy, and obviously we understand the attention, which is keeping your eyes on the wheel and get off your cell phone, by the way, mm -hmm. um, and making sure we actually, and your business is the same way. <laughs> right. uh, you can't be running your business, you know, staring at the Facebook reels all day long, um, is also the money, money in and money out. I think it's important to understand what are the boundaries, what are the opportunities, um, what do I sort of ask people to kind of look at in terms of what creates and drives real business. I know no brand owners who spent less than $100,000 in the first 12 months to scale a real 
a successful seven and eight figure brand. That is the truth. Hopium, guru, online, YouTube, real short people aren't going to tell you that because they want to scare you away from, they don't want to scare you away from their programs. Mm -hmm. But if you're willing to deploy 100,000 in your business in the first 12 months, you now have one of the three major factors of success for any business startup of any kind. Okay. And that is obviously the knowledge to do it. Knowledge and capital, intellectual capital, very mm -hmm. important. You can get the wrong kind or you can get the good kind. Um, that's extremely important understanding where to spend your money wisely and how to deploy your time and attention correctly. I'm not wasting it on things that look like profitability or productivity when in actuality you're just masking productivity for activity. Okay. We want actual revenue generating activities. The second one is being undercapitalized. Okay. Most businesses in the first year undercapitalize the actual expectation of what is necessary to get it going. Therefore, they put restrictions on the business growth or opportunity that they forcibly put on it themselves, mm -hmm. not the business or the opportunity. Does that make sense? Yes. Say it like that? Yep. 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 So because of that, they simply say, well, I only have X, so I can't do Y. When in actuality, Y is probably what is required to really turn it into the kind of lifestyle opportunity and business they truly want to have in the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you've got 50 to 100K in capital to deploy to the business in year one, and you, if you're going to do Truro cars, if you're going to go out and do some short-term rentals and you're going to do some loans or however you're going to finance that or capitalize it, e-commerce is very much the same way because you got to get physical products in a private label brand. You have to deploy capital to inventory. You have to deploy capital to marketing and you have to make sure you're doing that wisely to give your business a fair shot at it. So capitalization is important. And honestly, the third thing that most people don't think about is again, that good to great suggestion uh, I mentioned a minute ago. Okay. If I have more capital than I have time, then I have a, a potential for complacency. Okay. I have a mm -hmm. potential to acquiesce doing things I know I should do to get the end results because man, it's okay. I make enough money or this situation is good enough or I don't really need, you know, great. It's going to come when it comes, blah, blah, blah. So they can deploy or think or go or start and do, and then just find the rest of life squirrels them away. Squirrel off into some other place where they don't actually finish executing because they don't need to, because it's good enough mm -hmm. that they're not willing to risk for great. And that could be someone's, you know, hell to heaven island scenario, right? Mm -hmm. doesn't mm -hmm. always have to be, you know, under capitalization or no money. And I'm struggling and suffering and that's not fun. I know that because I've been there, but it's really that balance between, you know, I want that great thing, whatever it is. I want that actual house on the beach in Florida where I can live if I want and go there versus, you know, this is the life I don't have and will never get and take a very different approach to doing it. So, you know, I wanted to cover the money in money out aspect of these things because it's important to understand, right? You can go to the world and it'll say, give you a $5,000 course on how to do this, but then not really tell you, you need at least 10,000 minimum in capital to start that process or you're never going to get anywhere. Right. And with that thinking and process, three, four or five months down the road, you get married to the business and the idea. And then you find out you have to divorce it because you got to quit it. You got to stop. It's not profitable. It's not working. It's wasting time. Spend a lot of money on something that's not working. And then usually you point the blame to someone else or something else like Amazon took my money and Amazon sucks and it doesn't work. I hear that a lot. If those are failing or other means to basically project your you know, situation out into the world when in actuality, you should be more reflective of self. Uh, as to why I wasn't, you know, considerate of those things. So that's important to understand. At the end of the day, there's a lot of products. There's a lot of competitive products and innovation of products. They would create a lot of upside potential and opportunity. Once you're trained and conditioned to see that, you just can't stop seeing it. And we laugh because people in the group are like, hey, I went to Target today with my kids to go look for something. And all of a sudden I saw like four product ideas that I didn't see before. And I'm writing them down. I'm going to go see if I can make them profitable because every opportunity is now setting in front of them. They just didn't see it before. And now it's right in front of them and they see it all the time. And they had the skills. And to now they, take have the skills. they had the skills. Yeah. yeah they're adding yeah. into other things they're doing or other businesses and opportunities. You know what I appreciate about what you just said there, because mm -hmm. one of the least favorite tenets of, in like uh, Napoleon Hill's uh, Imagine Lavish Success or Think and Grow Rich is accurate information. Okay. Right. And, uh, you know, and so to me, you have to start out with accurate information and the, you know, all progress begins with the truth. So if you yeah. need to know the truth, all right, here's the capital I got to have, or I got to get to do this. It's better. You start out with that. Like if that scares start out you with the truth, even if you, you don't like it. Yeah. Jim, Jim Collins called it, you know, looking under the rock. 
I look at all the nasty squiggly things. I actually pick up the rock and look at it. And some people in their life right now know things are bad, but they sort of don't want to look at it. I want, they're just like, okay, the money comes in, the bills sort of go down. I don't want to look at it. I don't really want to pay attention to the credit card bills. I sort of want to don't, I don't really want to kind of know where right. I'm at. You know what? Empowerment right. and change comes from actually facing it head on. If you really yeah. want to understand, it comes from facing those head on and looking at them and saying, okay, what has to change? What do I got to do next? Right. And one of those things for our world is not to sell a product less than $30 in retail price point. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's got to be above that. It's got to be between 50 and $300 in retail price point. You need the profitability. Okay. Of that it means you need at least $10 minimum in profit that you put in your pocket for every unit that's sold. That also gives you an opportunity to buy another unit. So you can mm -hmm. sell that one again. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to that basics and that simple understanding, you're going to start targeting products that shoot for brands and not what we call me too products, which is where Amazon sort of mosh pit of sellers end up, which mm -hmm. is where you hear a lot of sad stories online where people are selling and can't get their products and this sucks and everything's really bad. And it, to me, it kind of visually looks like a mosh pit where people are in there banging around with each other and you're maybe the smaller guy and here's a six foot four tatted up guy slamming into you and it's all sweaty and nasty. I like to be up in the box looking down. Right. And I started down there in the mosh pit and I'm like, this isn't going to work for me. I got to get out of this. Like when I first got going on Amazon, I was like, I got to get out of this. How do I get out of this? Well, we build brands. We started, you know, we're like, hey, we got to build brands. You can't just be flipping products and throwing low, low price stuff around. You can move a lot of units on Amazon mm -hmm. and you can do it for a lot less profit. I'm more interested in doing multiple products that may sell three, 500 or 700 units or more a day, as long as it meets my profitability requirements. Right. And then I can go get more of those products. And each product I stack up becomes a new revenue stream. And every product. Because everybody wants stream. to race to the bottom. You don't want to be the low price seller. That's you know? right. You don't want to be the low price person. in the Because if there's a reset, let's say we're in a, you know, we, we talk about we're in, in the middle of a, in the eye of a financial hurricane, but you know, even if there's a recession, if you have a high end product, you know, you're marketing to a more affluent consumer. They're not experiencing recession like regular people are, right? They're they still don't buy products at the same level. No, right. they buy at more solution levels. They don't just they buy it. You know, they buy it at the one. People see it more at the want level, but it just means that they the things that they need they can get, right? So they go and buy them. And even in a downturn economic market, products are always going to be in demand. And right. demand elasticity and price elasticity, with meaning we can move price and move up or down in the market depending upon the market changes because we control that. We can ebb and flow with the products. If the products are becoming a little more costly because of supply chain, then we can move retail price around to adjust. We can move with the market. And it's one of the major pillars and indicators of what is a successful industry that will overcome or still be a dominant or player in a recession or a deflationary situation. And that is where e-commerce and physical products is. If you look into the history of products, you will see products have always been in demand. They've never gone away, right? Right. Like real estate and being an asset in the tool of that mechanism, physical products is also a virtual real estate, okay? An unlimited virtual real estate, if you will, mm -hmm. with physical product assets that we purchase. We're mm -hmm. translating fiat currency and depression and inflationary currency or inflationary currency into a physical product worth five to 10 times more than we bought it for. See, I love that you know that, right? And that, or that whole last conversation, that's when you have a coach that knows what they're doing and not just selling you a course for a quick hit. So, that, you know, you got it, you got a little bit of information, but you don't know enough to do anything, right? Or how to adjust and because uh, business is always moving. Yeah, one just hit one product hit. wonders. They get one yeah. product and it starts to go really well. And so they go sell a course on how to do it. <laughs> right, right. You know, so yeah, like all that stuff annoys the heck out of me. That's why I like yeah, talking I real people that, that are doing real stuff. And, you know, I only know a couple of people who actually sell courses that are actually really good sellers that actually sell and do well. But the mm -hmm. rest of them, mm, they're just into it for the course stuff. But yeah, real business building and, and mentoring is, is uh, you know, something that's been around forever. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just mm -hmm. been changed and dynamically changed due to the power of the Internet, which also creates opportunities and it creates challenges, of course. And anything because you're now your 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 market is not like the your area It's the world. Literally, that is correct. So now you're working on a one to many relationship mm -hmm. of opportunity, which is why we love the power of Amazon is while I can still put a website online in the United States and reach everybody in the United States. 
Amazon's infrastructure that spent more than 15 to 20 billion at last check on growing that last mile infrastructure and trust with the customer means that I can leverage that the similarity and familiarity of the marketplace and product base that I can bring a brand into creates trust in that product and delivery by leveraging Amazon. So if I just go to a straight website and put up a brand that no one's ever heard of, I now have to gain that audience conversation and trust and authority so that they're willing to buy from my website versus going to Amazon or somewhere else. So I just decided, well, let's skip all that. Let's gain the trust and authority of Amazon first. Mm -hmm. Then our product brand packaging and other things can make up brand ability to the customer. And if you know you brought something from Amazon and you see that product and you like that brand, you will typically go back and look for more of it. Amazon yep. system will also prompt you continuously for other products in that brand that you bought that you might go buy from that person again. And as a prime member, you should know that with 200 million prime members, they spend an average of over a thousand dollars a year on Amazon. So where are my business metrics tied to prime members? Because we sell with fulfilled by Amazon, which means we deliver through prime on Amazon in two days or less. And they mm -hmm. deliver through those products to the, to the customer means that their potentiality of opportunity um, for that marketplace for us is a thousand dollars per person per year. If I sell one product, what happens, Curtis? Statistically, it's not as relevant for me to get you as a customer buying my product one time to buy it enough to make up a thousand dollars unless it's a thousand dollar product. Right. right. So what I need to do is present you with one product that begets another product that adds accessories and gears to the other product that crosses over with the other product. So there's like four or five product opportunities you can buy from me in a year period and then buy multiple versions of them in that year because maybe you buy one this month and you buy one four months from now. Or maybe you get on subscribe and save and you buy them every month. Now I got you. Right. Now you're emotionally tied to my brand. Well, he just gave you all a crash course in a lot of stuff, marketing, direct response, retail, pricing, everything, right? And this is in a in a in a uh, a, a webinar. So we could imagine if you went got deeper with him, how much you would know and really learn how to you know change your your your. Well, I know family. enough to be dangerous, and I very much know this business model. But my my partner of ten years. Our coaches, they're amazing. I get to be the dumbest guy in a room with smart people now, which is fun. Because that's they what, are I, super that's what smart I endeavor people. to do at all times, right? They are super smart people. And right. you know they say you don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. And at this point, I'm blessed to be around multiple people uh, who support the Voltage Initiative and what we do and support our clients every day and every week and every month. I'm very hyper responsive and they are amazing at what they do. Uh, and it's so good at it. Now, how can we... I want to continue this, but how can we, uh, our, our listeners, uh, I guess, follow you, see what you're doing, see if they qualify to yeah. actually be a part of this? What, what would you say next? Well, let me make it personal because I know everybody mm -hmm. likes to just be like, hey, go to this generic thing and check out that whatever. But let's be personal. I'll give you my cell phone number. All you need to do is text me Curtis. So I know that you were listening to this podcast when you came through. You will text Curtis as a keyword. Remember the old AOL keyword days? Curtis. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to do voltage keyword. Uh, Curtis, <laughs> um, send it to 417. It's plus one if you're in Canada. 417-413-4209. 417-413-4209. Just text me the keyword, Curtis. Yes, it's me. I know you may ask, is it an automated system? No, it's not. It's actually me. It's a, it's a personal cell phone number. Please don't abuse it or I'll have to block you. But right. if you text me that, we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to take you through some questions. We're going to get to know each other a little bit. I'm going to vet you as much as you're vetting me. I want to make sure that if I'm going to put 10K on the line for my fee and we're going to go after 100K in net profits together, that you're going to show up. You're going to pay attention. You don't have to have e-commerce experience in the past. I would prefer that it isn't your first ever business adventure of any kind mm -hmm. because there's a lot to learn here. And if you've got some experience in business at all uh, to some degree, uh, then it is going to be a little easier for you to catch on to the business and the terminology and, and what we're doing. Um, but again, we'll talk, we'll have a conversation. I'll share some details with you. If it makes sense, we'll grab a discovery call for 30 minutes. We'll actually have a zoom call as part of the application process. And I'm really making sure that it's a good fit for everybody. Not everybody's a good fit for it. And uh, if we feel like it's a great fit, you'll even going to take a disc assessment profile. doesn't take very long, but I really want to find out where your personality type meets our best sellers uh in terms of our business builders 
and I want to match your personality closely as possible because I know that creates the upside success potential of you uh, understanding what to do every week and month to make this a really successful business. I love it. I love it. So listen, do that. You know, we'll put all this in the show notes, his uh, cell phone number 417-413-4209 keyword in the, so you dial that. And then in the text, you put, yeah, shoot a text to that, throw Curtis in it. Curtis. It's in and it's it will in. be me. So don't expect an automated response. There you go. And if so, you do it at two fifty nine in the morning, I'm probably not going to get to you to the next morning. Right, so exactly. We're, we're not answering <laughs> it. Right. That's funny. And um, yeah, don't call it, you know, so look at what, what, what time zone are you in? Central time zone. Central time. Oh, yeah. Yes, so sir. we're in Eastern. So don't yep. get crazy. Don't and, get crazy. Um, yeah. Don't get crazy. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we have to think of something else. I want to talk about this some more. You just fascinated me. So we will, we will, uh, we might have something cooking going on. Uh, after this, where you can, you know, we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper, but um, well, guys, we, fun. yeah, Niels, thanks for spending so much time and dropping so many gems uh, for our, my listeners at the practical wealth show. And uh, guys, if this is a good opportunity for you, you should, you should reach out and explore. If you fit some of the initial criteria we talked about, then it's, it's definitely, I know people that are working with him, they're crushing it. And uh, so you want to, you know, you want to check it out. Neil, thank you so much. Thank you, Curtis. All right. Guys, go out there. Share this. Leave us a review, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.